Okay, let's be honest, everybody knew I was going to tell you not to buy the Polar Patriots War Bond. You see the title, you're on YouTube, you know what it is. And I was going to drop a video the same day it came out, but it was so bad, I didn't want to just record my jumbled, maybe sensible, maybe senseless thoughts and opinions. No, I had to test these solo, I had to form actual original thought. And you know how difficult that ish can be. If I was to judge these based only off of the games I play with other people, I would have just said that this is a mid war bond. Now, now I've got some opinions. Here's how this is going to go. I will separate all of the important elements of this war bond into the tiers of why, absolute disappointment, mid, it's a hype, and spoiler alert, there will be one thing which is actually good. Now, I really do wonder why did they even release armors in this war bond? Every single one of these armors is going to get slapped with either why or absolute disappointment. This is going to be based solely of your participation, so cast your votes as a comment below. We have the Winter Warrior armor, which is a heavy armor with the servo assisted passive, the Kodiak armor, which is again heavy but with the fortified passive, and the Arctic Ranger, which is a light armor with the, are you ready for it, wait for it, the scout passive for Pete's sake. And look, if you're into the idea of collecting armor sets for fashion purposes, I can absolutely get behind that. Fashion is the true end game of almost any online game. However, let's put things into perspective. The first Warbond, Steel Veterans, had two medium armors and a heavy one. All of them had the servo assisted passive. In a perfect world, we'd get a light, a medium and a heavy, but at least all of them had a unique slash logical to the Warbond passive. As you know, Steel Veterans, all of the sets feature mechanical limbs, it just makes sense. Then we had the Cutting Edge Premium Warbond, two mediums and a light, all of them with the Electrical Conduit passive which gives you 95% resistance to arc damage. A niche passive ability for sure, but at least it made sense within the theme of the bond and the look of the armor sets. Then in Democratic Detonation and in the current Polar Patriots War Bond, none of the armor sets feature any unique passives or anything other than their visual style to give the sets any kind of real identity. So I'm having trouble understanding what's the point of putting these visually great looking armors in an obviously themed War Bond slash season pass if none of them will come with an ability that is on brand for the War Bond. I am not a gaming programmer but I am sure the design team can come up with some niche passives of abilities that a couple of good programmers can put in the game without a lot of hassle. If you want the Warbond for the armor sets, be very well aware that you will get cooler looking sets in the Super Credit Store with the same passive abilities or maybe even better. But before we move on, if you like Helldivers 2 and you want to get more no-nonsense videos, honest reviews and opinions and the latest in the news and leaks for the game, make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get back into it. Let's get to the weapons because there's a lot of points that should be discussed and we are starting off with the tenderizer. So, it's an assault slash auto rifle which puts it in a group of almost zero competition considering all of them maybe except the adjudicators suck. So it doesn't need to do much to take the lead of the pack. With that in mind, let's compare it with pretty much the first gun you will ever touch in the game, the Liberator. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Intel has told us there are at least seven. They're the same picture. Wait, this doesn't make sense, they have the same damage, even though the tenderizer should be a high caliber assault rifle, it has a smaller capacity than the liberator, it has 5 less recoil, which is so anti-wow, I'm not even underwhelmed, I'm just whelmed. And to top it all off, it has a lower fire rate? What's the point of this gun even existing? It's not like it has any better armor penetration because it's just on light armor pen. What even is this game? Designers, hello? Wake up! Wake up! Wake up, call! So, what kind of damage can you expect to get out of this thing? Zero. Nada. Zilch. Freaking nothing. Killing the smaller enemies will take about a round, which is to be expected. Hunters and anything on that low medium level of enemy types needs about a third of the mag to be dispatched. That's already not great as it just doesn't feel powerful. But how much does it take to take down a brute commander? Wait, it takes a mag? It takes a whole freaking mag? Are you kidding me? Okay, 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 let's calm down a bit. Woosa. Woosa. What, what, what about a biospewer? No. It takes two goddamn mags? What?
Granted, this is in the sack, which has much more health than the head, but even if you try to go for the head like Thor didn't, it would still waste more than a mag, and due to the lack of any sort of knockback effect, this pure will just press W and won't give up. It will spit on you and make you its girl for the night. I don't intend on testing any primary weapon on the heavier units for obvious reasons, but there's not even an inkling of a semblance of sense to the existence of the tenderizer at the moment, Pre any buffs, this is honestly the worst primary in the game bar none. It goes in the Y category, for why even bother creating this crap? Also, I'd like to remind you that I'm running a giveaway on this channel in honor of getting monetized and hitting 1,500 subscribers. I'm giving away these two Helldivers 2 themed coasters. All you have to do to enter is to comment a yellow heart under this video. Next up, we have Motivational Shocks, our booster for the bond. Its effect is to let you recover faster after being slowed by an attack such as Acid. It does not mitigate area effects like EMS strikes, and it's absolutely useless. I try tried it in almost all of my games on Thursday and the effect is marginally as good as Muscle Enhancement. However, don't forget Muscle Enhancement not only helps against slows, but it also allows you to walk through hard to traverse terrain easier, so there's no point to motivational shocks even existing. Absolutely no point at all, and this is what it should have been doing. The current effect stays the same, but instead of just recovering faster, and it should be much faster, after you recover you should also get a movement speed bump a small one, but something that would be like an actual motivational shock. This goes in the same pile as where my dad puts me, absolute disappointment. Next up we are talking about the new grenade, the incendiary impact nade. It does 150 damage outright and it leaves fire on the ground where it exploded. It combines the best parts of both the impact and incendiary grenades. It blows up as soon as it hits the ground and it leaves a whole lot of fire. Against the bugs this is simply spectacular. It doesn't need a lot of time to get rid of most units medium or lower and it also puts in a bunch of hurt on the medium sized enemies. Even the bots are liable to get this smoke. This is honestly the only real saving grace for this warbond and it's absolutely great but it's not worth the 10 bucks. Still this is my new favorite grenade and I will be using it in every single one of my games. The only thing you need to watch out for is to not hit a teammate. It is going to go in the actually good tier 4, I am surprised it doesn't suck and it's actually worth it. Let's move on to the new submachine gun, the SMG 72 Pummeler. It comes with 65 damage, 45 bullets and a fire rate of 475. It comes with light armor penetration and concussive rounds, the latter allows you to stun the enemies you shoot with it. Compared to the SMG 37 Defender, it actually has worse damage and fire rate, so in reality the only thing it has going for it is those concussive rounds. But this is actually not the comparison we should be making, we should really compare it with the AR-23C Liberator Concussive. If we look at them both, you will see the Pummeler has better stats in all categories other than damage. So then we are getting an upgrade of an AR which was already kind of useless. Nobody was really using that so uh, this is so confusing I have no idea what's going on. Mr. Krabs, I am so confused. I'll be honest, this gun is actually kinda high. It can be really useful against bots since you can pair it up with a ballistic shield which neutralizes anything other than a rocket shot. It can take down striders if you shoot very carefully in the head which is above the two-legged walker. It doesn't even take a whole lot of shots. Troopers, raiders, marauders and commissars get downed very easily. Berserkers however will take a lot of your mag, maybe even more. Devastators? Forget about it. Even with headshots this is not built to fight them effectively. But it does manage to keep everything locked down very well because of those concussive rounds. It's the same against the bugs as well. With all of that being said, it's possibly a good SMG on par with or even slightly better than the defender. The only issue here is how good are SMGs currently, because in a solo environment they will never be that good because of their low damage profile. However, in a team setting, this can do really well. It has some great stopping power, and if your team takes care of the bigger guys, it has its uses. It will be surprisingly going to the AI tier for being useful in some situations. Second to last, we have the P113 Verdict, a new sidearm pistol which is very reminiscent of a Desert Eagle. It has an incredibly high damage value of 125, which, if you're keeping up, is twice the value of the Tenderizer, and it's really close to the damage profile of the Senator, which currently is my favorite its sidearm. So what's the verdict on the verdict? Well, let's compare it with its only real competition if we take everything into account, the Glock 19 lookalike, the P2 Peacemaker. Comparing the two, the P113 has an impressive 50 damage more than the P2, it lags behind in every other category, so is damage enough? 
Honestly, depending on what you value, yeah, kinda. It one banks pretty much everything from medium-sized enemy units down. It is very reliable and it basically does what it says on the tin. I honestly have nothing else to say about it. It's not super good, it's not super bad, hence it's going in the mid-tier. Let's bring an end to this with the Plaz 101 Purifier, the gun which had me excited like a fat kid in a candy store. It needs to charge up to shoot a bolt of plasma which erupts in a fairly large explosion similar to but bigger than the Plaz 1 Scorcher. It comes with 250 damage which is 50 higher than the Plaz 1. So on paper it seems to be pretty good, right? Wrong. Due to its charge up of about 1 second it feels fairly horrendous and that's a really big word for me, so you know I mean business. It takes down small to medium sized enemies in one shot, which is what should happen, so it gets no points for that. It needs 4 shots to kill a devastator, which would have been good if there was no high charge up time. Sadly, there is. So imagine this, you're getting shot up straight to the gates of Valhalla by a fleet of socialist automatons and your only recourse is a gun which can only shoot after you charge it. If you think it feels bad, you'd be very much correct, you're liable to get overrun very quickly. In team scenarios, you can kinda act as the guy with the big primary, so it does have its uses. It is even not that bad against hive guards when giving them the dome skis. It's good on destroy eggs missions because of the explosion radius too. However, as with other weapons that have an explosion radius, you can damage yourself fairly easily if you're shooting at something close to yourself. And considering there's a charge up time to this gun, if you're up against the bugs who only press W, this is more likely to happen than not. Those jumpy boy the hunters are an absolute menace to play against when you're wielding this gun. They already gave black air force energy, but having to charge up against them is simply next level BS. Could it take down chargers if you shoot below their butt? In theory, sure, if you're wasting a couple of mags. In practice, it takes way too much time and is more annoying than it's worth. You'll find yourself switching to your sidearm more often than not. And on top of this, for some reason, the bolts it shoots are so narrow I found myself missing a lot of shots. The only way a charge time makes sense on this weapon is if it's a light version of the railgun, which means at least 50 more damage, maybe even more. Right now, it's pretty much just the worst version of the Plaz 1 Scorcher. It goes in the absolute disappointment category because it's the Star Wars 1 of this war bond. It had so much potential and just wasted it all away. With everything covered, where does this leave this war bond? It's honestly really bad. While I understand that Arrowhead don't want to make weapons incredible since they'll get accused of pay to win practices, is this a free game? Or a better question, are you able to get the war bonds for free considering you are more than likely to pick up at least 10 super credits per game? and each war bond contains 300 super credits inside of it. I can mess with side grades, but they should have a place in the quote unquote meta. Only the grenade and SMG are actually good weapons, which I'd play with any sort of consistency, with the pistol being something I might take into my games, sometimes maybe. All in all, do not buy this unless you're ready to waste your money. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.